Hello and welcome to Frank's School. Uh, I uh, would ask you now to begin to watch Willow, uh, the movie Willow. You'll find it online uh, on YouTube on the channel Overimaginated, and they're part 1 through 12. I told you yesterday that. And what I'd like you to do is look at the first uh, 7 minutes and 30 seconds of the film. Uh, up to the point where Willow uh, says, I will not be ignored. And there I would pause it. That's what I used to do when I used this in school. I only, normally only use that much of it, sometimes a little bit more. And I'll tell you why I used it. And that was in eighth grade. But now I intend to use the whole movie and analyze it. Um, the movie uh, was uh, written by George Lucas and that's something that you could research. I had suggested yesterday that if this were being, if what I'm teaching were being used in a class, you would easily have 20 minutes, well, 10 or 20 minutes more to do something else. Well, you could research who is he. he he's responsible for Star Wars, that, that made his big name, and Indiana Jones, that character. He was influenced by a man named Joseph Campbell, also worth studying, but I don't have time uh, in this connection. Now, why I used it, and I would normally start it, play it, and then when I got to that point, I would stop and I would ask the students, well, why did I do that? You know, we'd be busy studying, at that point, uh, literature out of the Old Testament. And the answer, the answer was that there was an allusion to Moses. I, I didn't write it down here. But Moses, uh, when the baby uh, floats down the river in a makeshift basket, uh, and is in danger of being killed, and then is found by a woman uh, who will care for the baby. That much is an allusion to Moses. Uh, I even thought, as I was watching this time, that the dogs chasing uh, the baby uh, uh, was almost... A, I could almost see that being an allusion to uh, Uncle Tom's cabin, which in itself was an allusion to Moses. Well, anyway, um, you will see, uh, I, I said I will analyze this. Uh, well, let me stay on this for a moment. I point out to the students at that point in eighth grade, and I already taught this last year before there was a digit there, uh, that uh, I call that kind of character an endangered royal baby. It's a baby destined to be royal and in grave danger. And we discuss that in great detail as a kind of character. Uh, Jesus was uh, in that case, Zeus was, uh, Simba I think is his name in, in The Lion King. Uh, it, it is a very, very common kind of character. Now as a kind of character I call that an archetype. Now I'm, I'm sure I use this term not terribly accurately, but it works for me. I don't even exactly know where I learned the term. It's not the same as a stereotype or a prototype. I define it as a kind of character that keeps showing up. Well, there's seers. We find out that there are seers. Uh, we don't know much more about them, but I mentioned them at, right at the beginning. There is that evil queen. Uh, her name is Babmorda, and uh, on her costume, and I believe this movie might have won an award for its costumes. She's got horns on her uh, crown. Notice she's evil. Right when she says, kill her. Uh, the unwilling hero. Uh, these are kinds of characters. We find out that, uh, that Willow, he doesn't want to be a hero. He says, push the basket down the river. We'll pretend we never saw her. He, he's, is not, he doesn't want to be a hero. Uh, but he ends up, so he's unwilling. Eventually he becomes a hero. There is the evil landlord, the prefect. Uh, I always think of... Uh, tying the woman to the railroad track and the trains coming, or Simon Legree, I, I, I think, uh, was the evil landlord, or, well, he was the slave owner. Well, in any case, uh, we've got that archetype, uh, the prefect, um, and the powerless husband. When, when Willow says, I will not be ignored, and of course they, his wife and his children ignore him, well, there's that powerless father or husband. I think of uh, Al Bundy, uh, but it, it's, it's common, it, it's a sort of a comical idea that he'd like to have power but doesn't really. All right, these are archetypes and we're going to see more archetypes. Uh, it's very useful that way. I maintain that when George Lucas wrote this, 
he was very careful to use archetypes and to use themes. Now a theme in seventh grade I define as a kind of story that keeps showing up. And from the beginning it is a chase. And really the, the whole movie, not so much at the very end, but most of the movie is a chase. The, the cat that's always helping me is chasing something. Uh, all right, there are literary devices uh, to mention. Oh, no, first of all, let me mention this. Where film. When the students are watching this, sometimes I will pause it, sometimes I'll speak over the movie and say, where is this filmed? Uh, you know, as they see all those landscapes and let them guess all over the place. And the answer is New Zealand. New Zealand is often used as a place uh, to film fantasy worlds. The, the birds, the trees, the plants, they're not quite the same as what uh, we would recognize. Uh, all right, literary devices, comic relief. Usually students know about comic relief. Uh, there is a little comic relief. Well, no, there's, there is comic relief with that prefect. Uh, he's going to take the farm. Uh, but, uh, well, most kids laugh just to see the, the plow pig, the pig with the harness on for plowing. Uh, that's, and comic relief, of course, after that dramatic opening with the chase and all that, uh, it gives you a chance to, to laugh a little bit, and the prefix supplies that. Uh, and I call it a visual simile. When he goes walking away, uh, and you also see the pig, uh, it's like he equals a pig. And uh, the soundtrack, if you listen, there's even an oink oink, I think, on the soundtrack, right as he's walking away. Uh, okay, and I guess finally, of the stuff that I have up here, the final thing I'll mention now for today is our talk writing, my spelling system, daikini. I, I don't know how daikini, uh, there's the accent. I don't know how you're supposed to spell daikini, but I heard it in the movie, and if I wanted to record it, I used my spelling system. That's what they said, regardless of how they spelled it. And uh, uh, in that world, grown, uh, large people like us, we are daikinis. Uh, all right, so I, I rather hope you don't go further, because uh, I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like for you to see the stuff as I tell you about it, because I think you'll understand it better. So try to stop, even though the uh, first part one is not over yet. Try to stop at that point. And if you're a teacher who's using this in a class, by all means stop, and hopefully you've got a better way for the students to see it than from YouTube. Uh, all right, see you next time.